Hey everybody, welcome back. We're at 60% on the foundations and we're still working our way through intro to CSS. This is the third video, it's axes in Flexbox. Okay, let's see how orientation of items within a flex container can be controlled using the flex direction property. Lesson overview. This section contains a general overview of topics that you will learn in this lesson. You will learn about the two, X, two axes of flex container. You learn how to choose those axes to arrange your content in columns instead of rows. So axis. The most confusing thing about Flexbox is that it can work either horizontally or vertically, and some rules change a bit depending on which direction you are working with. The default direction of a flex container is horizontal or row, but you can change the direction to vertical or column. The direction can be specified in CSS like so. Flex container, flex direction, column. Okay. No matter which direction you're using, you need to think of your flex containers as having two axes. The main axis is the cross axis. It is the direction of these axes, axes and changes when the flex direction is changed. In most circumstances, flex direction row puts the main axis horizontal left to right and column puts the main axis vertical top to bottom. In other words, if in our very first example, we put display flex on a div and it arranges its children horizontally. This is a demonstration of flex direction row, the default setting. The following example is very similar. If you uncomment the line that says flex direction comment, those divs will stack vertically. Okay, so if we click the CSS and we uncomment this, so our flex container and our flex container div. So flex container div is going to make it so that these all have that this CSS value. So they've got the peach puff, they've got the brown solid background, so that's where we see this color right here. And they've got a height of 80 pixels, that's this height right there. And then the flex is one and one in autumn. But what they're saying is that if we change the flex direction here, and we uncomment this, we'll see that they become vertically um, aligned. So one thing to note in this example, flex direction column would not work as expected if we use the shorthand flex one. Try it out now. Go change the flex value from flex one one auto line. You can, configure out, you can figure out why it does not work. If flex one is used, the divs collapse even though they clearly have a height defined there. Are they saying change this to zero? One one auto would not work as expected if we use shorthand flex one. Oh, so, so it's saying if we use shorthand flex one. It doesn't work because it's one one auto does work. The reason for this is that the flex shorthand expands flex basics to zero, which means all flex grow in and flex shrink in would, be, would begin their calculation from zero. Empty divs by default have zero as a height, so for our flex items to fill the height of their container, they don't actually need to have any height at all. The example above fixed by specifying flex one one auto, telling the flex items to default to their given height. We could also have fixed it by putting a height on the parent flex container or by using flex grow one instead of the shorthand. Should we go flex grow one? Like that? Does the same thing? Or we could have done this on flex container. Um, flex container, or by using flex grow one. So are they saying that if we had done this here instead, it would work the same? Hmm, seems like it. Okay, cool. So I guess it's dynamic and we can do stuff with it. Another detail to notice when we changed the flex direction to column, flex basis refers to height instead of width. Given the context, this may be obvious, but it's something to be aware of. We strayed from the point slightly. We were talking about flex direction and axis. To bring it back home, the default behavior is, it is flex direction row, which arranges things horizontally. The reason this often works well without changing the details in CSS is because block level elements default to the full width of their parent. Changing things to vertical using flex direction column 
adds complexity because block level elements default to height of their content. And in this case, there is no content. There are situations where the behavior of flex direction would change if you are using a language that is written top to bottom, right to left. But you should save worrying about that until you are ready to start making a website in Arabic or Hebrew. Knowledge check. The following questions are an opportunity to reflect on the key topics in this lesson. If you can't answer a question, click on it on it to review the material, but keep in mind you are not expected to memorize or master this knowledge. How do you make flex items arrange themselves vertically instead of horizontally? Flex group column, right? Flex direction column. In a column flex container, what does flex basis refer to? Flex basis. Hmm, can't remember. Flex basis. Another detail to know is when we change the flex direction to column, flex basis refers to height instead of width. Okay, so if we did flex basis, we made this 100 pixels, would this get bigger? Ah, cool, it does. In, uh, in a row container, what does flex basis refer to? And it's not going to be the height, it's going to be the width. So if we were to make this, just comment this out. Oops. Uh, yeah, flex basis of 100 pixels. What if we made it 12 pixels? Yeah, okay, so it refers to the width. Um, why do previous two questions have different answers? Because they have... Uh, because they're vertically versus horizontally oriented. You think the flex containers exist in two axes? Flex row puts the main axis horizontal and the, and the main axis vertical, top to bottom. Cool. All right, there's additional resources you can check out if you want, but for now we're going to mark this as complete, and we're going to move on to the next lesson, which is alignment. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.